Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another video with Swaggle Haas. And today I have a very special video, something a little different here on the channel in a segment that I'm going to be dubbing as Creator Corner. Now, of course, on the Swaggle Haas YouTube, we often talk a lot about the hobby of collecting, maybe the financial side of comic books and the speculation side of things. But what we don't get to do is often talk to the creators of the comics we love. So in this video, I decided to invite special guest Adam Barnhart to have a conversation with him about, you know, his his work on Kickstarter projects, as well as his work on comicbook.com. And we sort of have an interesting conversation about his craft, the new Kickstarter project he created called Moonspawn, and also the speculation side of crowdfunded comic books, as well as, you know, the media publications like comicbook.com and their influence on the speculation market, especially with regards to new comic books. So I hope you guys enjoy this type of video. And without further ado, here is the full length conversation. Well, I'm here with Adam Barnhart. Adam, you know, thank you so so much for hopping onto the channel with me today. No problem. Thanks for having me. Yeah. So I'm really excited that you're here because, you know, like kind of I said in my preamble is, you know, here on the channel, we sometimes dive into sort of the new comic book space and maybe we talk a little bit about indies from time to time. But admittedly, I'm not like super, you know, knee deep into those, you know, neck of the woods right. of the comic book space. And so I did want to do a video that kind of talks about you know, some of the things that you do and you specialize in, which is, you know, uh, from writing and covering new comics on comicbook.com to actually being someone who creates their own comics, who writes their own comics and has a Kickstarter project going on and maybe can sort of speak to that space. So I kind of wanted to, you know, just kind of bring you on uh, and have this conversation with you here today. But I guess before I get, you know, too far down the line, uh, maybe you can kind of just give yourself an intro to, you know, everyone who's watching. Yeah, I, you covered it pretty well, man. I, I My day job, I write about comics and about movies. And my night job, I write comics and hopefully sometimes movies or, or television shows. You know, that's, yeah. that's the goal. But no, I, I've been working at comicbook.com in some capacity for six years now. Um, and then I, I made it, I was able to make it my full time job three years ago, over three years ago now. Nice. Um, and it, you guys all know what the deal is. The, comics and movies and tv um whatever um people want to you know click on uh, on facebook yeah. that type of stuff oh, it's uh, all like the nerd pop culture space yeah yeah anything pop culture really i mean yellowstone's huge on tv and that has nothing to do with comics right um just stuff like that um and then a few years a few years ago when was it i started working on my first comic in 2018 or so 2019 and uh i pitched it around and a comic publisher picked it up um shit show by scout comics and uh it's it's been crazy man that's yeah. uh, it's been a little bit crazy so I'm, I'm very fortunate to uh have virtually my entire life revolve around this type of stuff that's that's the dream right there that's, that's the, dream. the dream man well we'll, we'll get into that aspect with shit show and things like that in a second but i but i did kind of want to just you know talk a little bit about comicbook.com and i guess like the media space of mm -hmm. as far as like how it circulates around comic books because it is really interesting to me like i feel like you know sometimes when on the channel when we talk about like spec stuff and invest mm -hmm. stuff like i often wonder of like does the tail wag the dog or like what you know what comes first chicken and egg like does a book get hot and then right. he kept key collector or comicbook.com reports on it or does comicbook.com report on something and then a book sort of gets hot and maybe we can kind of filter our conversation around one particular character known as titan you know it's presumably supposed to be kind of like the next um you know maybe a null within the hulk universe and stuff now now you didn't write this article in particular but it's just one that exists on comicbook.com right. i guess maybe can you speak to like the no pun intended symbiotic nature of like <laughs> of like how comics get hot and spec and then like what the machine of things like comicbook.com do in the market. Like, do you have any feelings or thoughts on, on that? Oh, absolutely. So I will say we are, we are called comicbook.com, but you know, thanks to the advancement of blockbusters and stuff, it's, it's probably, you know, movies and television first. So obviously speculators are always going to be, not just speculators are going to be looking for the stuff that's been optioned and stuff, but that's kind of uh, stuff that kind of alerts us to begin with. Right. Um, I mean, we obviously we review every single comic released from uh, uh, 10 publishers. I mean, most publishers get their comics reviewed um, every week in and week out by the team. 
Um, right. But, you know, personally, I mean, for me, that's the type of stuff that kind of triggers my alarm is, is when the option comes through and, and, and you cover that because um, it's a movie, you know, especially like now that now that streaming's going absolutely crazy. You know, if HBO Max pulls the trigger on something or Netflix, of course, or Disney Plus with even with Percy Jackson coming up. Um, that's, that's the type of stuff that really, um, you know, captures my attention, at least on a professional level, on a personal right. level, I just wait until I get the notification from key collector, <laughs> you sure, know, sure. And, and that's usually how I, I find out about most of my stuff, at least comic wise. So what about this, this book right here? Did you have any feelings on this particular Donny Cates Hulk run right now? Like, I feel like this is going to be kind of a character that is going to be news within the spec space for a bit. And mm-hmm. I almost wonder, like, I feel like before this character ever got hot within like sort of the grassroots comic space, I feel like the publication of the fact that this character was coming was the thing that sort of generated mm-hmm. like the speculation or the the hype around it and stuff. And, and, and I wonder like, like, can you speak to that or, or did you have any opi- opinions on, on this particular, uh, you know, comic with this character? Um, you know, on, on Donnie's level, you know, God country is probably one of my, it's probably a top 10 comic for me. I love, love, love the story. Um, but the, the superhero stuff really <laughs> blends together for me. Sure. So, I mean, this book's gotta be, I mean, Donnie Kate sells and that's why he gets, you know, carte blanche with anything he wants at, at Marvel. I mean, he's a hell of a writer um, and, and he moves books. We've seen that with whatever he's done, right? Um, right. He's probably the most spec writer at, at Marvel now. Yeah. And his creations have been at least, I, I mean, I, I can't think of anyone else off the top of my head. So yeah. we'll see. I mean, we'll, we'll see. I mean, let's see where this story goes. I mean, I'm sure people are already – moving and stuff and on you brought up how the publisher was was promoting it and uh, they're gonna they're gonna do whatever they can to get to get books out the door, yeah right so whether do you think do you, do you think that donny cates like understands this machine of like generating like promoting his own book based on spec and how like it, it gets covered in in media um uh, i don't know that's a that's a really good question um his stuff just so happens to sell, I guess. I'm not sure if he, I think, you know, as, as a writer, there is a certain sense of um, knowing you have to sell comics, right? Because, yeah, you know, especially at Marvel, if you don't do something that, that the masses enjoy or, or will sell a comic, you won't be able to tell as much of your story as you want to tell. So there is, I'm not sure if you even want to call it a sacrifice or there is that aspect to the job where you do um, have to give up something. I'm not even sure if you're giving up dignity or, or whatever the right terminology is. Right. But you do have to at least have awareness that you do need to move books to go beyond four issues or something like that. Yeah. You have to be able, I mean, in the, in the most like charitable way of it, like it doesn't have to be a a, a bad thing, but it's like, you have to cut through the noise, right? There's so many comics out there. You got to figure out something beyond just like, no, no, no. It's just a good story. Like, trust us. It's a good story. Like you got to have some kind of headline type of thing that is going to really punch through. Right. And I mean, this is, this is an ongoing book, right. And it's moving into the second arc. So um, they always say you have to uh, number ones are going to sell, but then the number twos is where you get people hooked on the story. Well, now we're starting a second arc. So, so we'll see. I mean, even Al Ewing's guardians galaxy lasted two or three arcs, I think if that, right. Um, and that was one of the hottest books. Uh, Immortal Hulk went 50 issues, was absolute, which is absolutely unheard of. Right. You know? And I mean, you you move from that to this, so you kind of have to, you know, we we all expected excellence, I, I think, um, from Immortal Hulk for, I don't even know how many years was that, four or five years? Um, Something like that, yeah. Yeah. Um, do, so yeah. Do, you, do you think that that, like, as from a writing perspective, like what, what do you think that is? Are we just sort of as, as a collecting comic uh, publishing industry, are we just sort of destined to like having to always figure out like our, 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 the days of, you know, long 
300 run ASM series, are they just gone? Like, is it just impossible to sort of create that anymore? And yeah. do yeah. we have to sort of do the reboot thing or, or what's your thoughts on that? Well, I know judging by say at the royalty statement I got for shit show, uh, you know, the drop between one and two, um, the publisher told me it wasn't that bad at all, but, um, I'm like, damn, that, that, that's a hefty drop. Feels I, was pre- <laughs> I, I was prepared to do another number one. I think right. we, we printed 7,700 um, copies of number one and not even half that for number two. Um, right. Not bad for an indie book. Um, not bad at all. And, for small press. Um, and, yep. Yeah. And of course, just to let people know, this, this is shit show number one right here. How, how many issues in this, in this run did you end up um, getting out? There's three in the first volume. It's already collected in, in trade and all of that. Very cool, um, yeah. And that's actually, if you can see my background, that's an homage to my favorite movie of all time. That's actually a store exclusive for a store in Florida. Oh, I have okay. no idea why Key Collector picked it up. Or Well, or, well look, look at the cover art inspired by the movies, The Goonies. Look right at there. that. So spec on it, you know. Ten yeah, bucks absolutely. Oh, yeah. You never know, guys. You never know. This is a well. One thing you should do is you should get, you should have a key clerk because I went to the written by and they don't have your name right there. Uh, no, we gotta we gotta I fix do, that. Yeah. We do so, have to fix that. So Nick, Nick, definitely go fix this. Yes, yeah, so um, or I'll just change my name to unknown. That's also a possibility. Yeah. Well, very cool. And so, so, you know, I, I wanted to cover a little bit of CBR, a little bit about you. And before we kind of get into, um, you know, some other, other stuff you're doing, I did want to just kind of pick your brain a little bit about, you know, the sort of industry that is like Kickstarter comics or Indiegogo comics. And you can either speak to it as someone who has done it yourself or speak to it from a like perspective, even in the comic book media perspective of like, is this kind of where we're going? And like, do you feel like we're going to see more and more creators going this way? I mean, we're already starting to see like even publishers like Image or Dynamite or Boom, like start to do these kind of hybrid launch models uh, with their books. Like, I I guess speak to that. I mean, I have this one up right here. This is Dragon Ring. It's a a Cullen Bunn, who obviously is a very successful writer. He's doing one, you know, uh, here in April of 2022. So what's your thoughts on this space in general and how it relates to like the market? Uh, you know, surface level, it's never been, it's never been more popular than it is now. I, um, crowdfunding itself has kind of lost a, a little bit, you know, in turn, crowdfunding has kind of lost a little bit of its, its direction. I think, you know, it's originally it's the spirit of kind of, uh, getting a crowd together, you know, to, to right. sell to your stuff and, and kind of the old uh, grassroots type efforts. Whereas, you know, as we've seen through Berserker, which was a million dollar campaign or whatever, $2 million, um, some treat it more as a, a pre order or just another channel to sell that book because they're selling Berserker regardless if the campaign's funded. I mean, it's Keanu Reeves plastered all over right. the campaign. So there's no chance that's not going to make all sorts of money. Um, but it, it has kind of lost, you know, its sense of direction a little bit. Um, but at the same time, um, the, you know, why would, you know, someone like me or why would anyone else that has a Kickstarter campaign want someone else like that to do poorly or something of that nature? You know, you look at, uh, Brandon Sanderson, um, he's made millions off of his latest campaign and uh, his team, they, they posted a YouTube video. Uh, I launched my campaign like a week short, but they posted a YouTube video where they went through the publishing category and either uh, backed um, every single comic that was, you know, um, whatever, not totally like triple uh, X or, or some not safe for work or something like that, but they backed right. every campaign um, in the category and, uh, they're close enough. They even completely funded some of them themselves. Um, you know, it's self-publishing is becoming more, I don't think, I mean, it certainly won't ever go away, but I don't think it'll even decrease in popularity. We've seen the likes of Jonathan Hickman leave Marvel where he championed a whole new era of the X-Men, uh, to right. launch, um, an interconnected world on Substack, which is digital comics. Those will be printed eventually. You know, they're already right. doing like a 
who's who of their their world that they're uh, giving to their annual subscribers or whatever. So even on the crowdfunding and and uh, self publishing aspect, you know, we're seeing big names going. There was a huge exodus a, a while ago of everyone going to Substack. I mean, vir- yeah. virtually most big two writers and artists are yeah. involved somehow. You know, there's um, uh, Hickman has Mike Del Mundo on his. Um, and they just even, uh, Devin Lewis, was it? They hired away one of the Marvel editors, um, uh, to kind of spearhead their thing. So they're making enough through self publishing to actually have employees, and right? Essentially become their own publisher. And why wouldn't you want to do that? You know, you don't have to worry about, um, loss of IP or, or something like that, or an instance where your movie's optioned. And you only get a five thousand dollar check, despite you know them copying your artwork panel for panel or something. Right. You know? Absolutely. I mean, yeah, it definitely feels like a movement to that. It's almost a little reminiscent of like you know in the '90s when like all these artists were going to like Image Comics. It was kind of like this new space to really um, do something different. Um, and and obviously, Image exists in in some iteration today maybe not quite what it was at that point but it it almost feels like this new space is what we're going to see more of and you know one of the things that i kind of wanted to point out is is, you know we're seeing a lot of successful like almost uh you know grand slams in this in this space where it's like we have a book like this which i I don't know if you're too familiar with this one this one was called black it came out in 2016 and there was this was one of those those uh, purely crowdfunded comic books that actually got really hot in the speculation market too because um, from this one being successful and I think they raised like 100k or whatever uh, they got this announcement and deadline that you know Warner Brothers is going to you know do an adaptation uh, for this this comic book right here so this is one of those things where it's like the kind of the ultimate sort of dream scenario in terms of like a person creating their own thing for fans that are maybe going to want to read this specific niche genre or, you know, this IP and it's gone, you know, so far as to get option stuff. And, and it's not the only thing, like there's books like this, Killtopia, which is a pretty cool, like kind of cyberpunk style thing that ended up getting, you know, a, a, a animated TV show option and stuff. So yeah, it, it really is kind of a, a unique space and, and there's definitely like a lot of opportunity um, for, for creators like yourself. Mm-hmm. No, absolutely. I agree wholeheartedly. You know, as, as writers, of course, we always want to uh, tell the best story possible. You know, comics are a medium where you can, um, sure, they cost money to make, but not in the sense that you don't have to worry about cutting down on visual effects or whatever. You right. know, you right. can do whatever, as long as the artist is all right with it, you know, you can do whatever the hell you want script wise and you can really push the boundaries uh, of the medium even more so than you can with film or television. No, it's true. Actually it's the, it's the cheapest medium that allows you to do the highest concepts. Exactly. That's probably Um, a good way to put it. Yeah. Which is like a, you know, really cool because you get to have these, you know, super amazing worlds and things like that. Um, And speaking of which, you know, tell me a little bit about Moonspawn, which I think is, this is your new, uh, project that you're doing. And I guess, you know, help me kind of understand some of the Kickstarter space as far as like you creating this project. Well, what did it take for you to start here? And then kind of like, where, where are you currently and where are you sort of looking to go, um, in the future? Right. So it did start with shit show. Um, that is, so uh, shit show is my, my old elevator pitch is, you know, my X meets Y is the boys meet shameless and essentially it's it's about this uh, superman type who uh didn't save the world when he was supposed to and became a bumbling drunk and instead formed a traveling circus um with other superpowered people um and that snowballed not only did that snowball into shit show 2 which we're working on now but it also opened up keepers of the cosmos my second series through scout that's coming out sometime soon but it also led into this. We did a shit show shorts Kickstarter last year, um, a successful campaign. Um, and and I really didn't mind it. You know, that was four, four short stories. Um, and, and I like being able to work with multiple collaborators 
um, just because you know if you strike gold, maybe maybe they'll come on board for a longer series or or what have you. It's it's always good to uh, not burn bridges around comics, right? Yeah. Um, but shit show shorts led to this. I wanted to do you know continue that series while at the same time realizing I wanted to tell kind of darker stories and kind of get into or not even kind of but get into um, you know horror storytelling and things of that nature more darker deeper um stories so moon spawn and the defenders of the dark uh were born um this what i'm funding right now is is a five short story anthology um four short stories introducing you know the, the defenders of the dark then the fifth featuring a character named zaria Moonspawn that ties all of the um stories together um it's you know, swamp and man thing meets vampires meets maybe even some bloodstone Ulysses and Elsa. Um, yeah, you can you can see the art right there. Right. Um, each story cool. has yeah. Each story has a different um, art team. Uh, we have five different artists, five different um, colorists, and two or three different letterers. Um, and then we have five covers um, to this, two featuring the different characters. Plus, uh, uh, the fifth is a special metal cover. We're only printing twenty-five of. Um, so I know I, I like the, the yeah that one's the that one's going to be the metal cover. Right. Um, I worked with Juan Angel with that. Um, Juan's done so many, so much work with me, and, and we have more stuff in the works. He's he's a spectacular artist. Right. Right. Yeah, it's a beautiful cover. So I, I definitely, you know, you mentioned Man Thing and stuff. I'm getting a little, maybe almost uh, Doctor Strange vibes, you know, in there as well. Um, so this is kind of cool too, because like this is something I think maybe to those, you know, who don't know too much about the Kickstarter space, what it feels like the, you know, incentive programs are really something that is kind of catching on too into the comic crowdfunded space where it's like, you're almost, you almost sort of need to create like, I mean, I mean, it's awesome that you get to create multiple covers, but it's also like one of the kind of the, the ideas that, you know, uh, makes it sort of exciting. And that's kind of where it's like, you know, if, so, if I'm someone who really believes in, you know, the, the moon spawn project, uh, I might want to do that stretch goal and get the kind of, you know, one in, I, I guess you might want to call it one in 100, one in 1000, mm -hmm. the metal, metal right. cover or whatever it is. Um, mm -hmm. Is that something that is you sort of just see it like you just kind of knew from the start, like, okay, having like different sort of incentive covers is probably the way to kind of, you know, give people who give more, you know, this extra value into their comic. Don't, you you hit the nail on the head there, you know, and that's the good thing, you know, about Kickstarters. Uh, we are going to pitch a uh, moon spot around number zero. This inter introductory issue does lead into a four issue mini series, but we're not under contract with the publisher yet. So we can do, more flexible offerings and things of that nature. Like um, we, we don't do self cover comics. We do a, a, a thicker matte stock, which it looks very slick and the signatures pop and w whatever you want. But um, I wish you probably can't see it through the camera anyways, but they look slick um, like that metal cover. I know some publishers are starting to do it now. I got a, um, a Harbinger number one metal cover from Valiant, I think. Mm -hmm. Um, but at the same time, you know, not every comic's going to be metal, you know. So the Kickstarter is an um, excellent way to do that. Um, a lot of a lot of Kickstarter projects do get picked up by comic companies, you know. I, I right. know through Scout, um, Scout really does look at for for Kickstarters that performed well um, and, and publish them, you know, with new covers and new artists and and so on and so forth. And Scout does have a um, their own branch of the company that does actively speak with those in Hollywood as well. Scout, right. they, they announce probably a new option every other month or so. Um, so there is that component as well as yeah. just the best of both worlds, bringing it to Kickstarter first to, you know, get it produced. And then that way you kind of have a list of, Hey, here's the customers we did with X amount of marketing and X amount of promotions. You know, if you can do more, you could probably expect a little bit of more sales, you know? Right, right. Yeah, it's kind of a little bit like kind of how the, I, I sort of say the filmmaking world uh, works right now where people are kind of making their own indie features and they eventually get, you know, discovered at, at film festivals like Sundance and then they get distribution deals and then they kind of take it from there. It's kind of like the same kind of space now for I feel like a lot of the uh, indie, indie comic books and stuff. And what's kind of cool about it is it's like, 
you know, I think about like the sort of almost the original kind of indie crowdfunded comic book, in my opinion, is almost like Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, like number one. And and it's like, imagine like having some of those first prints of that before it ended up kind of getting picked up into a mat, bigger, bigger publishing thing. And I feel like that's sort of the exciting thing about if you find a, a, a Kickstarter project that you're really interested in and it ends up, you know, hitting the home run or whatever you get this, you have this very cool distinction of having this very, very rare sort of first printing of some of these comics. Absolutely. Absolutely. Nope. That's, that's exactly what it is. Um, you know, kind of ash canny, even though it's full issues and stuff like that, you know, but who, who wouldn't want to have be the one to say, Oh, Hey, I have that one of 25 moons on cover. one. Yeah, now absolutely. And so, th so then, you know, I think people kind of understand this part, but just to hammer it. So there's different tiers. You people yep. buy different tiers. They can pick up different covers. So this one, it's like actually the same price. I can just pick whichever cover I want. Right. 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 So yeah. And that's the thing. Some Kickstarters do get really convoluted with their offerings. You know, you can add a patch or you can add a bookmark or something like this, but we opted to, to go pretty basic with this one. Yeah, uh, I, can, I actually appreciate how yeah. simple it is because like sometimes I've seen some of the Kickstarters and you know I'm I'm not I'm not a boomer, but man, like sometimes I get confused with no, you know yeah. all this it, stuff. It, it is very overwhelming. Um so you can buy any of the covers, you can buy one cover, you can buy all of three of the four, you can buy all four. I think if you buy the, the four, we give you one free is how we priced it, but then the metal cover, of course. Um but yeah, it's we have some goodies planned, you know, if we hit stretch goals and stuff like that, we'll get you your bookmarks and the patches and, and things of that nature. But I don't, you know, then, this is a virtually unknown property. So who's going to put a patch on their jacket? You know? Right. And then what, is, when, when the crowdfunding comes into play, like, is this something that it's like, have you already finished scripting mm -hmm. and the pipeline is now, or the, the, the budget is now there to sort of fund the pipeline of actually doing the art and the printing, or is this something where it's like, you guys have already done all the work and now you just need the money for the distribution. And how long do people usually have to sort of wait to sort of get the, the comic that they ordered? So this one's 95% complete. We have the, you were, we have uh, four of the five stories ready for print. We're just waiting on the fifth one. And, and that should be done by the time we get funding. Kickstarter works um, by it wraps up and then you have a two week window from the day you end um, for them to provide you the funding. Um, I've, I think it's exactly two weeks, 14 days. Um, but then, you know, we will be ready to go to print depending on paper shortages and, and things of that nature, you know, um, we really hope to get every book sent out by August. Um, and it could be much sooner because we'll get the funding mid May and then we'll send it to the printer and who knows, maybe we'll get the books two weeks after that or, or something like that. Uh, of course there's all sorts of variables and stuff like that. You know, there's some people that do the Kickstarter and they only can uh, pay their artists for six pages out of pocket or whatever. So they have preview pages and then they get funded and then they use that money um to pay their artists it, so right. it just depends i mean for moonspawn the artwork's essentially done virtually done and and we'll send it to the printer as, as soon as we get funding for it i know i've personally booked um or backed campaigns uh two years ago that i still haven't gotten books mm. it's it's the process comics take ages and ages right. to make um so it just depends uh I mean, if there's like a risks part on the, the campaign, it's one of the bottom sections, you know, always check there. Um, I've always had experience, you know, and that's the type of thing. There's people that only do publishing through Kickstarter as well. And if, if you have a good experience with them, as I've had with several, you know, I go back to them because, you know, it's crazy how fast they can get stuff out. It, it right. is like it's sometimes it is almost as quick as, as just pre-ordering something offline or buying something online, you know, you buy it and you'll get it in the next week or so. Right. Very, very cool. Well, Adam, thank you so much for hopping on this channel. Hopefully that was, you know, kind of helpful for everyone watching, just kind of starting to navigate a little bit of this kind of Kickstarter new media comic publication space. Uh, maybe you can let everyone know where they want to find you if they want to kind of see more about your uh, work on your uh, Moonstone comic or also their, your work on uh, comicbook.com. Right, right, right. So, oh, 
be reversed. My uh, handle right there, Twitter, Instagram. Um, I post all the stuff there. Comicbook.com. I, I write eight articles a day, so you can find my stuff there. Moonspawn is available at uh, moonspawncomic.com. Um, just go there and, and do all that stuff. I'll have links elsewhere, but I want you to focus on moonspawncomic.com if, if you're watching this. Yeah. Um, all my other books, I do have my own website too. You'll, you'll be able to find that on my Twitter and Instagram. I'm always lost down here. I'll put, I'll, I'll definitely put a link in the description. Right. If you guys want to check it out, you know, support the project. I think Adam is a great dude. Uh, he's a friend of the friends of the channel, the pressable defects. Maybe you guys, you know, funded their, uh, Vampirilla cover too. So you might have a little bit of a taste of, of what it's like to kind of be in this space. But, um, you know, Adam, thank you so much for hopping on the channel today and, um, appreciate you, uh, coming on and telling us about your, uh, your, your comic and your, uh, comicbook.com insight. Yeah, no problem. Thanks for having me.